You know, part of me was thinking like, hey, free gun. Being car people, most of us have aspired to own cars that are interesting or exciting or compelling to us. It's always a delight and a compliment when someone else finds your particular vehicle exciting or interesting or compelling. However, sometimes there are people who decide they would rather just take it from you by force. Chronologically speaking, the first time it happened, I was back in high school. This is in about 1990, 1991. I'm a sophomore in high school, uh, maybe a junior, maybe a junior, probably junior in high school. I'd been out on a date that night. I was going back home. Uh, it's probably one o'clock in the morning. That was my curfew at the time. Near where I lived, there was a lot of mountain roads and there was this one particular mountain where you just kind of got a long running start. You went up over the hill like a roller coaster and at the very top you could see for miles, went back down and I lived not too far away from there. At the very, very top of that hill, there was a, a little dirt road that went a little bit further up the mountain to this old fire tower up the top. And I'm driving my truck home and as I'm cresting the hill, I see three guys standing in the road and they're kind of waving their arms a little frantically. As I'm going over the hill, their car is like backed kind of up this incline, like they're backing up into the road that goes to the fire tower. And they're kind of waving their arms, you know, and I, I pull up and stop. As I pull to a stop, you know, two of the guys kind of walk across the front of my truck, but one guy goes around the back and I just kind of, you know, lock the door and roll my window down about halfway. and. You know, the guy say, hey, our car broke down. Can you give us a hand? And um, and they were, I'm like 17. These guys are probably 20, 21. They're a little bit older than me, but not. we're all still pretty young. My spidey sense, maybe, I don't know what you would call it, but, uh, you know, there was one guy's kind of in my blind spot here. These two guys stand by the door. They said, we take a look. And I said, well, before I got out of the car, I said, well, you know, what happened? I'm, I'm, you know, I'd been working on cars for several years at this point, even being 16 or 17. So I said, well, I've worked on cars. You know, what you got going on? They're like, well, you know, can you just have a look? And, and I said, well, well, yeah, but just give me give me some clues. You know? He said, well, we're driving. I think that the, think that the battery or something's wrong with the battery. And I said, well, you know, if you're, we're driving your battery, you know, the car ran off the alternator. If your battery's bad, you'd have been fine till you tried to start it again. They go, like, oh, I'm sorry, it was the, it was the alternator. Must, the alternator went bad. And I said, well, if the alternator went bad, you would have run out of juice. How did you back it up? And right when I said that, the guy went for the door handle. And of course the door was locked. I had to gas, peeled off and got away. You know, and again, nothing crazy. It wasn't a, a, a crazy moment, but it was just a little bit of that car guy mechanical knowledge kind of picking apart the clues like their story just didn't match up and the body language you know why is this guy back here why aren't they all just usually there's like one guy doing the talk and these guys be sitting on the other car it just seems sketchy several years later i was on a motorcycle trip out west and i was in a pretty remote part of southern california uh this is in like 2000 or so it's kind of before google maps and gps and stuff like that we're still using the old school paper maps and at one point i had actually was kind of going down the central valley of california and i was hoping to get over to the coast and i was at a truck stop and i just stopped a trucker actually he said hey you know he looked like he's local route had a produce truck and i said Do you know if any of these roads are passable to get over to the coastline and the guy kind of looked down. he said honestly he said you don't need to go up those roads and i said well are they rough pavement or something like that you know i was on a big cruiser but he said no it's not the pavement he said you know we're out here in the middle of nowhere he said there's not really a lot of law enforcement out there and there's a lot of people on these back roads they just are going to want to stop you and see what you got and it's not safe so stay on the main roads i was like wow you know thank god no clue so i go a little bit further south and i i you know looked on the map there was a main road going over the coast i decide i'll i'll just stay on the highway so i go a little farther south and i'm getting low on fuel and i see a sign for a gas station up the highway and i see the little light up on kind of a hill so i get off the road it's a gravel road up the highway i go up the hill and it was a gas station it was in the past tense the entire building had just been turned into swiss cheese by what looked like automatic weapons fire the light i saw was actually the light on like the old payphone booths back then and uh the, the the phone was missing but the little light was still on there were actually two donkeys standing in where like the car would have been in the, the sole service station so obviously no gas to get there so i get back on the road drive a little bit farther south i needed to look at my map again and uh, the only street light around was at one of the little pull-offs you know out west they get a lot of flash floods so any place that there's an old creek bed they tend to put a street light there so you can see if there's any water so 
I, I pull off the highway kind of down into this little wash bed to be under the light and I get my map out and I'm, I'm looking at my map and it's already dark at this point. Uh, it's probably, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night. I'm looking at my map and I see some movement out of the corner of my eye and, and you know the desert gets very cold at night it might be 100 degrees in the daytime but there's no humidity to hold the heat so the second the sun goes down it's now 45 and i look down and probably the most beautiful california king snake i've ever seen just this beautiful kind of creamy yellow color with this sort of rusty orange and he had must have just been laying there when I stopped and he was just he wasn't looking for trouble he just kind of had his chin up on my boot and he was just sort of soaking up some heat off the exhaust pipes on the bike I'm like oh wow that's pretty cool and they're not poisonous or anything so I checked him out for a minute that was kind of neat and I, I checked my map again to see if I was going to possibly make where I was trying to get to get some gas so I put the map up and go on the road again and uh, I come across another sort of what looks to be like a, a settlement, and uh, I see a couple of cars outside this building. I pull up, and a very, very pretty Latino girl comes out, and she says, Hey, great to see you. Uh, what can we do for you? And I said, uh, honestly, I'm just looking for some gas. Is there a gas station? Anybody got a gas can and uh, around, something like that? And she goes, Well, we have lots of great things inside. Would you like to come in? And I was like, um, no, I'm really just looking for some, some, some gas, some uh, gasolina. And she says, she kind of looks sort of nervous. And she's like, thanks for coming. We'd love to see you. Would you love to, you know, glad you're here. Would you come inside? And I, I said, uh, do you, do you speak English? And she said, hey, why don't you come inside? Like she just, like she, I had no accent, but she just like rehearsed the saying. I guess she was just trying to get, I think it was a brothel or something like that. I don't know what was going on, but she was just the greeter. So I decided to leave that situation. Let's just get back on the road. So get back on the road again. And then finally, as I am running on fumes, I get to this little exit outside, probably a few miles north of like Paso Roble or somewhere. So I get there and there's like a gas station and there's like a little closed down Burger King and a McDonald's, a few things. So civilization finally. So I get some gas and I go past the, the closed down Burger King and then the McDonald's is there and they've actually closed for the night already, but like they're still in there. They're mopping up the floors, all that kind of stuff. So uh, girls at the time, I, I, I stopped a bike and uh, the lights were off in the parking lot, but there's a little drive through arrow and a couple of little lights here and there. You know, the bike was being a little sketchy and I kind of wanted to leave it running because it was dodgy to start up again so she said look i'll go knock on the door see if they got some food left or something like that get us something to eat and you stay with the bike oh that's the plan all right cool so i'm sitting there with the bike and, and she goes up and you know as she knocks on the door uh, as she's walking up there like two employees are going to leave for the night and the manager kind of comes to the door and he looks around and he unlocks the door and they both run to their cars and get in and kind of take off and i was like wow well, they must have a hot date or something like that and so she gets to the door about the same time and she knocks on the door and same thing. The manager's like looking around like behind her, like really, really sketchy. And whatever she says, it's cool. She steps inside, he locks the door back. So I'm just waiting by the bike. And about that time, this old beat up Mustang comes just sort of rumbling by, you know, like the exhaust is off on it. Just kind of blah, 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 you know, kind of idle by. And there's three guys in there that look pretty serious guys. And they kind of eyeball me and kind of look me up. And I, the bike I had at the time, I'd done a custom flame job on it. It had a lot of chrome, white walls, you know, leather bags, lots of studs on it. You know, it was a really pretty bike. They go around and it's, so it was like, you know, like gas station, McDonald's, Burger King. And they, they go around behind this Burger King and the car never stops. But as they went behind, you know, like that little privacy fence they put around the dumpster, as they went past it, I could see the interior light just flick on for a second. The car never stopped, but I could see the interior light, like the door open. So I'm thinking like, somebody got out of that car. And sure enough, they're going like very, very slowly. And I start looking around and there was like a little kind of a hedgerow between, you know, the two businesses. And sure enough, I see a guy like he's like crouched down behind these shrubs and he's like coming my way, you know, like, you know, I'm here, McDonald's is here, Burger here. He's like going along this hedgerow, coming my way, and there's nothing else around me. Like, this guy's coming for me. I'm like, oh, crap, you know. Now, about that time, of course, she is coming, like, out of the McDonald's with some food. She doesn't see this guy. I don't know what's about to happen, but they've been eyeballing the bike, and something's going down. So, uh, you know, I just kind of, you know, I, I did have a gun on me, but they were extremely illegal in California. I didn't really want to flash it or anything like that. I don't want to get in a gunfight or anything. I don't know if that's the situation even. So the guy's coming. So I'm, you know, I, I yelled to her. I'm like, stay there. And she's like, what? I've got food. I'm like, no, stay. So I, I just kind of stepped up on the curb to try to be as big as possible. And I just said, like, you in the bushes, like you right there. I see you. Stand up, stand up. And I'm trying to use like my big voice, you know, and, and he, he just free. I still see him crash down. He just freezes. And I was like, orange shirt, stand up. 
And he just suddenly kind of pops up, kind of prairie dogs, like he doesn't know what's going on. And I didn't draw the gun, but I just pulled my jacket out, put my hand. I was like, keep walking. And he just bolts. He runs between me and her. And like the Mustang kind of comes around. He just like jumps into the car and they just peel out. And I was like, my God. And she comes back. She's like, what, what's going on? I was like, forget the McDonald's. We're getting out of here. Crisis avoided, but something was going down and just, you know, just eyes and ears just watching. But the, the scariest moment I ever had, though, somebody wanting my vehicle happened in Atlanta. Uh, this was, again, 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. I had a 5 Series BMW at the time. And I lived downtown. I was going to visit a buddy of mine. The way to kind of get to his apartment it took me down. There was like a road that kind of went around a park. And it was like a, like the road was like an L. You know, it was just, you went down the road and there was like a cross street. You just sort of, there was no cross street. You just went down past the park, turned right, went down. That car, the air conditioner did not work in that car. So I had the windows down. It was a manual transmission. So I'm, you know, driving along. And as I come up, you know, there's some people hanging out and cars up down the sides of the road and whatnot. And it's late afternoon. As I'm coming down the street, I get almost to the 90 degree turn and a car from the curb where these guys were kind of hanging out just like pulled out in front of me and then just stopped. And I, just kind of, you know, kind of put the brakes on it and almost hit him, but he just kind of, you know, blocked me there. And, you know, I immediately just went to kick the car into reverse. I was just going to back up and go around him just because, you know, what a jerk. He wasn't looking. Well, it's second I go to put the car into reverse. This guy, I don't know where he came from, but just loud, angry guy just pops off the curb. He's just in my face. Just get out of the car. He's yelling. He's waving a gun in my face. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, just he's like in my window. There's a bunch of other guys standing around. I'm like, oh, this is not going well at all. He's kind of waving the gun, yelling at me, and he's actually yelling and sort of so aggressive that I, I can't even quite really respond to what he's telling me. So, you know, he's yelling, get out of the car, get out of the car, get out of the car. And, and so... The car's already in reverse. At one point, I just stiff-armed his arm like against the dashboard I, to keep the gun pointed at me, and I just dumped the clutch. Took off backwards, you know, the, the classic, you know, Rockford move, you know, just, you know, neutral with the front around. So I took off backwards. The momentum, he's actually on the hood of the car now, like looking in the windshield at me. His arm is in. He's still got the gun in his hand. He's looking at me through the windshield. I'm looking backwards. You know, there's nobody behind me. It's a one-way street. I go to swing the front end of the car in. He comes off the hood, slung him into a car. Car goes all the way around. I'm facing the wrong way in traffic. Nobody's coming. Again, I just neutral, swing the car around. He flies off. Car straightens out. First gear, peeled out. I'm out of there. I hit the main street, got out of there. Just, you know, oh my God, you know, you know, I'm just panicking. I mean, this is just like, you know, one minute I'm going to my friend's house. A minute later, there's a dude in my hood. There's a gun. It's crazy. I get going down the road. I'm thinking, okay, what do I do? do I call the police. You know, he didn't get my car. What's going on? I'm just like, and I'm... I'm not, I mean, the guy, I slung him into a car hard, but I don't care, you know, it's on you. I look down, the gun is in my floorboard. It's a Glock handgun in my floorboard. I'm thinking like, crap, what do I do with this? You know, part of me is thinking like, hey, free gun. But then the other part of me is like, you know, it's like the, the two little, the good one and the bad one, you know, the, 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 the bad one's like, hey, free gun. But the good one's like, you know, if that gun was used in a crime or something, now you have it and that's gonna, you know, let's don't just in some bizarre circumstance you ever get laid in this gun. So went to the police station, gave them the gun, filed a report. Of course, nothing ever happened on it. These were just three times when, you know, some vehicle that I was very proud of to own, somebody decided they wanted it to, decided they wanted to take it from me. And it didn't work out in any case, but uh, I'm thankful that I'm still here and I was able to dispose of those three vehicles in the manner that I saw fit rather than handing them over to somebody else who thought they might take them by force. We'd like to thank the Ticket Clinic for sponsoring this month of VinWiki Car Stories. If you get a ticket, no matter where it happens, it can have disastrous effects on your insurance premiums, points on your license, and possible suspension. So it's very important to find a lawyer that's local to wherever you got the ticket. The Ticket Clinic is a national law firm with headquarters in Florida and Texas, but affiliates everywhere. And they can help you find a ticket and achieve the best possible outcome. They kept me out of jail in Arkansas last year. They've helped tons of my friends and they can help you too. So visit their link in the description below for a discount.